Ever since the Razer Edge handheld gaming device released, I've been looking for more ways to get some use out of it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned it into kind of a desktop slash gaming console that you can connect to a larger display. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you already know what the Razer Edge is, but uh, if not, just a quick refresher. Recently, Razer released a handheld gaming device powered by Android. It's actually got a pretty powerful CPU, but uh, you know, a lot of people were a bit disappointed with it, given the price of this unit compared to other handhelds on the market, especially something like the Steam Deck. But uh, you know, if you've already got one of these, there is a little more use you can get out of it. So straight out of the box, the Razer Edge does support video over USB Type-C, but as you can see, when we plug it into a 16x9 aspect ratio display, be it a monitor or a television, we've got those black bars on the top and bottom. Now getting rid of these is actually pretty easy, and basically we're still going to be working with mirror mode, but there is kind of a desktop mode that I want to show you after this method. So there's basically two ways to go about this. First one is super easy. We're going to use an application from the Play Store called Second Screen. You can download it for free. And once it's set up, you're going to plug your device back in and a notification is going to pop up on the built-in screen. It's going to ask us if we want to use second screen. So I've got this set up to automatically go to 1080p when I plug in an external display. It changes the aspect ratio of the built-in screen. So you can see we've got black bars on the side there, but now on the external display, we've got full screen. And this is really awesome. It does open up a lot more room on that external display. And by the way, yes, I mean, obviously keyboards, mice, Bluetooth, or USB will work with the Razer Edge. And this is just kind of the basic method. We're not using desktop mode yet, and I will show you that in a second, but let's get into a little bit of gameplay. And to tell you the truth, this is all a lot of people are going to need to do. Now, if you don't want a desktop mode and you just want to play, you know, with the full screen, be it an external TV or a monitor, you can use this method quite easily. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to the Razer Edge, and I'm playing Call of Duty Mobile maxed out here on the external display. I think it looks great, it's perfectly playable, and all of the Android apps are going to scale properly because we're just mirroring the built-in display right now. So if you wanted to play Genshin Impact or uh, PUBG, it's really up to you. You can basically play anything, even emulators. But I'm going to go ahead and take this a step further, and we're going to enter desktop mode. Now this does require developer options to be enabled, and I do recommend using one free app from the App Store, known as Taskbar. And this is going to give us that taskbar functionality once we enter desktop mode. And we can go up to 4K with it, 4K 60, and it supports HDR, which is really cool. Once you have this downloaded, you will need to enable developer options. From your settings, you're going to go to About Phone, Build Number, and tap on it about five times. It'll tell you that you're now a developer. I've already enabled it on my device, so I do have developer options under Settings, System, Developer Options. So right at the bottom here developer options. Once we're here, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and find force desktop mode. We need to make sure that this is enabled. I also recommend enabling force activities to be resizable, enable freeform windows, and enable non-resizable in multi-window. Turn all four of those options on. Now, once we have this set up, if we plug our device in like it is right now, we're going to get desktop mode, but we're really not going to have a way to navigate it. At least it's definitely set up a bit funky. And that's the reason we downloaded the taskbar application. We're going to find that application. And from here, we're going to find desktop mode. It's right here on the main menu. We want to make sure it's enabled from here. So I've got this switch on for desktop mode. And the first time you enable this, it will ask you for a permission. It's a very simple one. It's to display over apps. So we're going to go ahead and agree with that. And now we're set up. And just a heads up, if your display doesn't support USB Type-C Video N, you will need an adapter. This one here is going to work with the Razer Edge or basically any other device that supports video over USB Type-C. And it's got a lot of functionality. 4K out, micro SD, full size SD, USB, and we've also got power in so we can charge the device up while everything's plugged in. Or you could go all out with uh, kind of a stand. It's really up to you. These do get kind of expensive, but it does have that built in stand. It's also got Ethernet. You can probably find one cheaper on a different site. Or something else I've recently run across, these cheaper USB Type-C monitors. Now, these aren't the portable versions, but as you can see, it's got a 100 hertz refresh rate, USB Type-C video in, and it's a 24-inch 1080p IPS panel. 
129 with a $30 coupon, so it's 100 bucks for this Type-C monitor. But personally, I would recommend just one of the cheaper adapters with at least power in and one USB port. And remember, the first time we plugged this in, we had those black bars in the top and bottom. I don't think it looks great. Some people can get by with it. But uh, now we've got this set up properly. So we'll plug it in, wait for it to initialize. And if you're only using a 1080p display, it'll display at 1080p or 1440. Or in this case, we've got a 4K monitor here. So we're at a 4K resolution. And we can actually use the built-in screen on the Razer Edge and the external display at the same time for different applications. Down in the lower left hand corner, we've got taskbar running. Now one thing that desktop mode on Android doesn't support right out of the box is kind of a snap feature. Kind of wish it did, but uh, you know, I can get by without it. But we've got multi-app, multi-window support, so we can launch several different applications at the same time. And remember, if you wanted to run something on the built-in display of the Razer Edge, you could do it also. So we'll just go ahead and launch a few apps here. We've got the calculator, Google Play, and uh, we'll launch a little CPU information. All three of these apps are running independently of each other, and we can kind of switch to them on the fly if we want to. Really, the main thing I'd be doing with this is gaming and emulation on the big screen. Now, I will show off some emulation by the end of the video, but another thing that comes in really handy is just 4K video playback, kind of a little media center. So I've just launched the YouTube application, gone to 4K, I've got Stats for Nerds on, and I will move in closer so you can see that we're at a true 4K here. The viewpoint and the display, plus we've got HDR support. So this is 4K 60 HDR, super smooth playback. I was actually really surprised to see that it supported 4K. I figured we'd be at at least 1440p, but given that it supports HDR also, does make for an awesome little media playback device. And we've also got Widevine Level 1, so if you wanted to watch Netflix in HD, it's totally possible. Now the main thing I'd be doing here is some emulation and gaming. Let's uh, check out some PSP emulation real quick. I've got a few uh, different emulators installed. Goes full screen for us. Got that Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, and we'll get right into some Chains of Olympus. I'm using the Vulcan back end with this emulator and we're at 4x resolution, no frame skip, I don't need any hacks or anything like that. We've got plenty of power for PSP emulation. And given the fact that we can go up to 4x resolution with Chains of Olympus, which is definitely a harder PSP game to emulate, with the easier to run stuff, we can even go up to 10x. Something like Tony Hawk will run it 10x all day. Now it's still a little overkill, but it's awesome that it'll do it. Setting up a two-player game with two Bluetooth controllers is totally possible. We've got some Dreamcast here using ReDream, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, one of my favorite fighting games. Actually, it's probably a lot of people's favorite fighting game. But yeah, I mean, it looks great on this display. And I've just taken it up to 1920 by 960. We could go higher, but it's not going to make much of a difference. And real quick, I just wanted to show you that, yeah, I mean, we can use dual apps here. On the built-in screen, I'll just launch Minecraft. Over here, we'll go with, let's do Windows 98. So this is just a simulator, but I've actually got Windows 98 installed on here using a DOSBox Pure with RetroArch. Just easier to get this up and running. But yeah, I mean, we've got two apps running, one on the built-in screen, one on the external display. This would come in handy for, you know, getting some work done on the larger display, watching a video on the smaller one. Now, obviously, this isn't going to compete with something like Samsung DeX or even Motorola's Ready4 desktop environment, but it's here and you can enable it quite easily. So if you did end up picking up a Razer Edge and you've just been looking for a little more functionality, keep in mind, it's totally possible to do this. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Now, I'm not saying run out and buy a Razer Edge specifically for this. In fact, you know, uh, I would just pick up an Android device. And if you're looking for something with a desktop mode built in, I would highly recommend a Samsung S series. From the S8 up to the S23, their uh, S line of tablets also supports it. And if you're looking for a different manufacturer, Motorola has their new Ready4 built into their higher end phones, which is actually a really nice desktop environment. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And keep in mind, I will leave links in the description for some cheaper USB Type-C to HDMI adapters you can pick up on Amazon just so you can get this up and running. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.